Hey, I'm going to help out um, anyone who may need a little bit of help getting started on the Google form today for fractions greater than one whole. Um, and so I'm going to walk you through the problems a little bit and give you some hints to get you going. And hopefully that will help. So let's look at the first one. The question is what fraction of the circles are shaded and write your answers as an improper fraction. So the important thing to keep in mind when you are figuring out the fraction of something that is shaded is you want to look at how many parts are in the whole. So if you look really close at each circle, okay, each circle is divided into two equal parts. So these fractions are divided into halves. So the number on the bottom, the denominator, is going to be 2 because the wholes are divided in half. Now we have to figure out how many halves we have. That's kind of a tongue twister there. But if you count the total number of shaded parts, there is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 parts are shaded and the wholes are divided in half. So five halves are shaded, and that would be five over two. Um, I'm not going to write anything down because I'm just going through it on my screen, but hopefully that helps you to understand. You have to figure out how many parts are in each whole. That becomes the number in the denominator. And then you have to figure out how many total parts are shaded like out of that whole. Let's look at this next one here, the squares. So how many parts are the squares divided into? Each square is divided into four equal parts. One, two, three, four. So these holes are divided into fourths. So we have to figure out how many fourths are shaded. And so we would count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, and you can see that seven parts are shaded and the holes are divided into fourths. So seven fourths are shaded. So it would be seven over four. Seven fourths are shaded in. Okay, now in this problem, we are supposed to figure out what this would be as a mixed number. So instead of writing it as an improper fraction, okay, each of the ones that are shaded um, fully count as holes. So you can see that there is a one hole shaded, two holes shaded, three holes shaded, four holes shaded. There are four holes shaded and then part of another hole is shaded in. So we can see that um, the hole is divided into one, two, three, four, five, six equal parts. And you should be able to figure out how many of those parts are shaded in out of six. So you would want to show how many holes there are plus how many parts of a hole is shaded in the last one. And I'm not going to tell you what that final answer would be. I want you to figure it out based on what I just explained to you. Okay, for this one here, you need to figure out what fraction of the pentagons are shaded and you need to choose it as a mixed number. So first, figure out how many holes are shaded. Okay, I can easily see that there's only one hole shaded and then part of another hole is shaded in. And I want you to try to figure out how much of that second hole is shaded in. So one hole and then part of another hole. Okay, and I'm not going to give you the answer. I want you to figure it out. Now, these number line problems are a little bit tricky, okay? But I know that you can do it. Let's think about what's happening here. So each of these, um, this number line, okay, if you look, you have zero, you have um, a number that we don't know, and then we have one hole. So let's just look at that part first. 
that number line, if there's only one mark between zero and one, and it's right in the middle of zero and one, what does that tell you that that it, that the value of that mark probably is? I want you to think about it first before I tell you. There's only one mark in between the zero and the one, and it's right in the middle. So that mark would be halfway between zero and one. So that G, the value of that letter G, would be one half. You have zero, you have one half, and then you have one whole. Now think about it. Continuing that pattern, there is another mark halfway between the one and the two. And that's going to be, you have to answer that for this problem. You have to find the letter value of letter H, the mark that is halfway between the one and the two. So we have zero, we have one half, and then this one whole would be two halves because two halves is the same as one whole. So how many halves would H be? Think about it like that. You have zero, you have one half. One whole would be two halves. How many halves would letter H be? And I'm not going to tell you because I want you to try to figure it out. Okay, let's look at this number line. This time, we have to see how many marks are there between zero and one so that we can figure out what the value of these marks are. So we have one, two, three, and then four. So between zero and one, it is divided into fourths. So this first tick mark would be worth one-fourth. This second tick mark would be worth two-fourths. This third tick mark would be worth three-fourths. And this one would be four-fourths, which is one whole. And then this would be worth five-fourths, and then six-fourths, and then you would keep going from there. So hopefully that helps you a little bit to figure out the value of the fractions on these number lines. Okay, I don't want to give too much because I really want to see if you can work through this now that I gave you some support. You may want to draw these number lines out on paper and copy down the number of marks that there are on them and write out the value of each mark. That will help you. Remember, the one whole is also a fraction. So just like I said here, if this is one-fourth and this is two-fourths and this is three-fourths, this one whole is four-fourths. So write that down on your paper because it's important to know that this is also four-fourths because it will help you figure out what these marks are worth. Okay? Good luck and let me know if you need any more help.